Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. Had a lot of good uh, input and discussion on my last video, which uh, showed me reconditioning the uh, Temco 30 horse rotary phase converter and kind of a sneak peek at a 45 kVA uh, 480Y, or excuse me, 460 Delta 208Y 120 transformer. Um, trying to figure out everything about that transformer, what does what, and I got some really good input from a guy who goes by the name Grouchy Old Man. Yes, that's his YouTube handle. But uh, he pretty much knew how these, uh, these transformers were set up. So when you look at the high voltage side of one of these transformers, it's, it's a delta configuration and the coils are connected like this. Now, there's no ground in this system, but for the purposes of measuring voltages, he said to go ahead and we're going to ground this h3 point so we can say that this is going to be zero volts and then we can read the voltages all along this coil up to h1 so we're going to energize the low voltage side of the mate to this coil um, and then that's going to just take 120 volts 120 on the hot side and neutral now each one of these coils it's not a continuous coil it's actually tapped with a number of um, center taps and they're and they're variable and they're numbered seven six five four three and two and in actuality there's no connection between five and four these are two separate coils And basically you've got a jumper on each <clears throat> high voltage side here that jumpers between you know any number of these different excuse me any number of these different um, center taps and you always have to bridge from two three or four to five six or seven and that basically tailors the voltage at, uh, at h1 or across this entire uh, entire uh, high voltage winding and you can go from like 434 volts up to 504 volts now normally these are done in a step down configuration so you're feeding the high side and you take what the power company gives you and then you adjust these taps to give you your low voltage side which measures out to 208 y 120 what we're going to do is we're going to apply the 120 volts to the low voltage side and I'm going to call out the voltages and we're going to write them down here uh, from zero on up through to the high leg of H1. So let's get over to the transformer and take our measurements. I am temporarily feeding the low voltage side of the panel uh, with this 12 gauge wire and I already checked. This thing draws about 15 amps just to keep its field going, um, which is within the capacity of that wire and the breaker but it, definitely you don't want to be leaving this thing on because that's 1800 watts you know, per coil. If you had both of these hooked up, then that's like a 3600 watt heater just sitting here. So anyway, we have, um, this is the neutral or the center point of the Y for the low voltage side. And R is the uh, low voltage side of this first coil. So that's gets uh, hot on, on 120. And then this white, we've grounded the H3 uh, of this coil. So H3, which is the connection between this one and this one is grounded. Now for the testing configuration, we're jumpered between four and five, which basically sets up the two, the top half of this coil and the bottom half of this coil as one continuous coil. It, it's, it also configures this particular coil for its maximum output voltage. So I'm going to power up and we're going to start at uh, ground and we're going to read the voltages and I'm going to write them down as, uh, as I go across. Starting with H3. Now you're going to hear a hum when this turns on. Okay, we're powered up. We have zero volts on H3, we have 123 supplying 
the low voltage side. First tap is two. 399. Tap three. 422. Taps four and five bridge together. 435. Tap six. 458. Tap seven. 472. And H1. The high voltage, 512. Wanted to make those quickly because I'm sweaty and sweat and 500 volts are not a good uh, combination. So I'm going to power down. Now for my uh, purposes with that set of voltages that you see there, the best jumper setting is three to six. And uh, these are set up with jumpers from two to six. So the voltage where it was, where it came from was probably a little bit lower, but I'm trying to get, you know, between 460 and 480, you know, on the higher side. So jumpering from uh, three to six gets me a little bit closer to 480. So I've got the probe on the H3. And I'm going to measure the voltage at H1 once I power up. But the other thing that you'll notice is there's a ground on this upper tap here. Uh, grumpy old man said, you know, because a Delta transformer setup has no ground, you can tie one of the points to ground to limit how, how far um, any of these voltage points get from ground. Otherwise it could, you know, it can kind of float and be anywhere. So the, the point that I'm tying is the topmost tap. That's going to give me about you know, 400 volts on one side and like 77 volts on the other side. That's the closest point to center that I could get because you've got a lot of coil in that part of the um, tap and then they make their all their adjustments in, in relatively small increments. So let's power up here and take some measurements. Okay, with our reference of H3, H3 to H1, gives us 477 volts. Now with reference to neutral or ground, H3 is 396, H1 is 77. So that kind of splits the difference and uh, you know brings everything centered about uh, the neutral point for that coil. It'll be interesting to see what the other two coils end up being once uh, once everything's hooked up together. Another way to look at this is we've got 399, call it 400 volts between these two, and then we've got 24 volts between those two, 12 volts between those two, 24 volts between those two, 12 volts between those two, and 40 volts here. If you add all these up, you get 512. But what we're going to do is we're jumpering from 3 to 6. We're tying this point to that point shorts these coils out so those go away and now when you add this up we get uh, 400 plus 40 plus 36 so that's 476 which is pretty much at or close to what we measured uh, in practice.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that little diversion into the you know sparks and arcs side of our uh, field. Um, thank you very much to uh, Grumpy Old Man and Electromechanical Stuff for their input and guidance through setting up this transformer and testing it. Very, very helpful. I also did measure the length of the circuit that I'm going to need to run across the building. I, I ran the snake through the underfloor conduit, you know, added allowances for each end. I'm going to need 80 feet of wire, and that gives me plenty, like if I have to relocate those panels uh, a little bit. So 240 feet of uh, number four copper that I need to get. It's currently running about $1.76 a foot. And then uh, number, um, number eight ground also through that conduit. So three conductors plus ground going under the shop that can get me power to the far wall and I can start running power. I'm gonna have a machining center on the, on the south side. So I need to get power over that side and stop stringing extension cords all across the floor like I've been doing. So hope you enjoyed this. We'll wire this up uh, permanently, uh, get the covers back on and we'll move on to some machining projects. I've got uh, parts that uh, my son's been hounding me to make for the Spitfire, Spitfire project. So I gotta work on that. Before I do that, I gotta build some jigs and fixtures to hold those and other parts. So lots to come uh, machining wise on Engineers Workshop. Till then, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, stay safe.